I'm going to tell you the moment that I did not get caught by authorities. I was being kind of illegal. Uh, well, first of all, let me back up a little bit and tell you that I grew up with a, an old pickup truck that my dad had. By the way, pickup trucks always have one in your household. It, it should be a household commodity. They're so handy. You just throw mud, muddy boots in the back, skis, and in this case, children. Well, we were going to pick up some bark dust, also known as beauty bark. I don't know why I call it bark dust, but I do. Don't laugh, bark dust. So we were going to pick up some beauty bark that was kind of mixed with manure. Uh, I, I, I think they call it something like, uh, like moodoo or something, I forget. Well, I was there um, helping my dad shovel this stuff in and I was like, hey, we're only in Black Diamond. Can I ride in the back of this truck all the way home? And my dad was like, sure, yeah. <laughs> Being the responsible father that he was. So I sat in the back of this truck. <laughs> and I, I didn't last very long back there. Um, in case you've ever sat in the back of a moving truck, it, it, there's this thing that occurs um, the wind sort of wraps around the cab and comes back up against the back windows, which is not what you want when you're sitting on top of a bunch of manure and beauty bark, because this wind will now be peppering your face with feces and really sharp pieces of beauty bark. <laughs> so I'll never forget my dad driving along the road at, you know, a good 50 miles per hour. And, uh, and I was just kidding, just slammed. Oh, it hurt so bad. And I was, <laughs> I could just picture him looking in the rearview mirror at his son who just had this silent scream pounding on the window. Let me in, please, please, father, let me in. He eventually did it just burst out laughing and he pulled over and let me back into the cab. Oh, wow. Well. The one other time that I rode in the back of this truck was also when I was very little. And uh, we were driving up to a car accident. Uh, so this intersection was closed and, and a bunch of firefighters were there. My dad kind of pulled up. Oh, oh, I remember why I was riding in the back. It was because my sisters were riding up front. There, were, there was no room. So I was like, hey, I'll be tough. I'll just lay down in the back. I won't sit up. You know, no one will know I'm back here. It's only two miles to our, to our house. Didn't anticipate some firefighters being there. And, uh, well, they did not see me. You know how I was able to smuggle my little skinny self under their view? <laughs> well, what I did was, uh, y you know, in a truck, a pickup truck, it sort of has, um, it, uh, you can sort of press up against the side of it uh, because most pickup trucks sort of have this, this curve, this lip that comes over into the inside of the truck. Uh, so I, I just remember pressing myself up against the side of this pickup truck with this bead of sweat coming down, just thinking to myself, I'm going to get caught, I'm going to get caught, I'm going to get caught. And I could hear the whole conversation as my dad drove up to the intersection, rolled down the window, and they're like, sorry, sir, the road is closed here. My dad was like, I I'm just the next house right there. Will you let me go far enough to get to my house? And they did, of course. But yeah, I totally felt like, you know, in those spy movies, it's just the the quintessential cliche where you look up and there's the spy just kind of braced with all of his limbs up against like the rafters up there. That's what I felt like. I was a little spy. So that ladies and gentlemen was the only time in my life that I was doing something borderline illegal that probably wasn't that bad, but I didn't get caught by authorities. A miracle. <laughs> uh, since then, I've gotten busted every time. Every time I've done something borderline illegal. Don't know why. <laughs>